So in order to have a complete programming course, we got to understand what exactly is programming and how does your computer even understand the programs that you write. So by the end of this video, we'll kind of understand how a computer works and reads a programming language. And then on top of that, we'll actually set up a whole Python environment and write our very first simple Python program. So let's get into it. So the question, what is programming? Programming is just a sequence of instructions. Just like whenever you read a cookbook, it goes in a row. You gotta do all the things in order. Programming is exactly the same way. In order to write a program, you need to know a programming language. A programming language, just like English and Spanish and Lithuanian, has all different meanings for every single word. But the difference is each one of these words has a very specific meaning when it comes to the actual computer doing something. So before we get too deep, I wanna kind of explain how a computer works and how your programs actually run on a computer. So first we have the main thing in a computer, the CPU. This is the central processing unit. This is what does all the calculations and everything within your computer. It's kind of like the brain of your computer, I guess. And I never really liked the analogy of the brain of the computer because RAM also is kind of the brain. RAM is where you store the data that is currently being used. So it's kind of like the memory part, the thing that remembers things of the brain, I would say it's the short term memory stuff, whereas the things that you need currently. So let's say you're running a program, that program will be in RAM because you're using it currently. Then there's the external storage. So this is like your hard drive, SSDs, and this is like your long term memory. So this is where you store things that you don't need to access right away. You're not currently using it, and it will also be able to survive power cycles. So when you turn your computer on, it gets saved into the storage. And when you turn it back on, Whatever you're using gets booted into the RAM and you're good to go. So I think the best way to explain this is by explaining how a program runs with all three of these. So let's say you're coding a program or you're writing it up. Your program will be written in RAM. And then whenever you click compile to check if it works, the CPU is actually the thing that will be running your program. So your program is stored in the memory when you're writing it the CPU actually does the running of the stored program. But then let's say you finish writing your program. If you're done for the day, you close your computer. The program then gets moved to the storage. And while you're sleeping or whatever, it'll stay in the storage. Then as soon as you wake up, let's say you want to run that program again. You open up your laptop, you click on the program, the program gets loaded into RAM, and then you click run, and the CPU will actually do whatever you your program is telling it to do. But the next part is how is that program being stored? Because you write a program using English words or whatever programming language words you're using, right? But all a computer is electricity. How can you store words inside of electricity? When you're writing a book, you can write it out and it stays in the book, right? But electricity can only be on or off. You can't store it in there. That's why you have a thing called a compiler. The so programs and really anything that your computer does is really just a bunch of zeros and ones. A zeros and ones means either on or off. So if it's a zero, that means it's off. If it's a one, that means it's on. And using those zeros and ones, that's how a computer does literally everything that you see. Every little pixel that you see on your screen, that's a pixel that's either on or off. The way you get colors on pixels, if you've heard of the phrase RGB, that means red, green, blue. Using those three colors, you have four LEDs together, a red, a green, a blue, and a white one for brightness and whether you're turning them on or off with different brightnesses you get all the different colors but we'll get into all that in a different video let's pretend we wrote this really complex program called print hello world all it does is just prints out the statement hello world whenever you click the run button to actually run this program what's really happening behind the scenes is this program gets loaded into a thing called a compiler and what this compiler does it translates your written out english code into something the computer can almost understand it gets translated into something called assembly language. Assembly language is just something that's a little bit more complex. Some humans actually still write in assembly languages. I took a couple of courses in college where I wrote a lot of assembly. Assembly lets you really control exactly what's going on inside your program. So it's very fine tuned. This assembly code then gets translated into machine code and all that machine language is just a bunch of zeros and ones. And now the computer can actually understand what's going on. So that's the very basics of how programs actually run on a computer. But now let's get into actually setting up Python and actually running our first program on our computer. So in this video, we'll actually only be setting up Python for Macs. 
But if you go to python.com or whatever, it gives you clear instructions on how to set up for Windows as well. For Macs, they actually have it really easy. Python should already be installed by default. If you open up a terminal and type out Python, you should see all these things pop up and you can just do version as well. And you'll see I have Python version 3.9, which is the newest one already installed. So there's two versions of Python, Python 2 and Python 3. Python 3 is a newer one and Python 2 is getting a little bit older. So I would recommend to always use the newer technology. There's reason things got improved. So we're gonna be using Python 3. By default, your Python name might be linked to Python 2. If you wanna change it so you don't have to write Python 3 out the whole time, all you have to do is type in Vim, and then if you're using bash or zshrc, which you can tell by doing ls-la, and you'll see I have zshrc, and you might have bash or bash profile somewhere in here. Depends which terminal you're using. But we are using zsh, so we're gonna do vim, that's zshrc and we're going to click e for edit and you'll notice this line i have in here alias python equals python 3. so every time i type the word python in my terminal i'll get the words python 3 actually and it will use that instead so a big reason why i actually like max is because this terminal is so much easier to use than the Windows terminal. Hopefully all you Windows users don't have too difficult of a time figuring all this out too. All right, so Python's already set up. Let's run our first Python program. To do this, you just type out Python, enter, and then here we have an editor where we can write programs. Let's say we write x equals one. What does that do? That assigns the variable x the number one. And then we could do print x. What does this do? This is just gonna print or show us in the terminal the value that is x and you'll see right here we have a one you remember the program we wrote out it was print hello world and all that does is just prints out the words hello world very simple to leave this editor you got to type exit that and we did it we wrote our first python program but well, you might think writing it in this terminal you're not saving it anywhere how do i rerun this program it doesn't make too much sense so for this it would be wise to get some sort of code editor for this we're going to be using vs code which is my favorite and all you have to do is create a file we'll call it hello world and dot py you'll see a little icon pops up like this i'll click enter when you click enter if it's the first time you're doing this you should see a bunch of pop-ups happen down here. These will ask you to install this Python extension. Make sure you actually do it because this Python extension actually helps you write Python code. And then there's gonna be multiple things that pop up, like it'll have something to say with linting and debugging and spacing and stuff like that. Accept all of that, it will definitely make your life a lot easier. So now we have our Python file called hello world. We'll do print hello world. You can save that, but nothing happens. That's because we just saved it, we wrote a file, we need to find some way to run it. So if you accepted all of those things, you should be able to click this run button. And down here, you'll see hello world pops up. It will run that whole command. And once again, you get the outcome right here. You can also do it manually from the terminal. You just need to find where your file is. Mine is in this folder called Python for everybody has the hello world.py file. And now to actually run this file, all we have to do is Python or Python 3 like you had it, and then hello world.py. And there we get the output. So there we go, that's the very basics of what programming actually is, how programs work, and we were able to set up our programming IDE and able to run our first program as well. Now we didn't get to any actual content about how to write programming and how to do the actual language it's because I think it's important to actually have a good solid foundation of what it actually means when you're running a program or writing a program. Hopefully you were able to take something away from this. This beautiful complex code will be available on GitHub if you want to check it out. Not that you should or would. <laughs> and then if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed the video. And thanks for watching.